Earth, planet, and civilization as we understand it has come a long way in the past 200,000 years and has undergone a multitude of changes. In that time, the human race has only lived for a mere point zero zero one five percent of the immense 13.7 billion years age of the universe. Humankind has achieved some of the most daunting goals in that period. They've come from hunting and gathering in the field of Africa, colonizing the whole planet in a time that is somewhat a blink of an eye on the cosmic level. Some of the incredible minds ever lived have helped push modern civilization forward and achieved objectives that were once thought to be unthinkable in just the past 150 years. We have gone from being stuck to the Earth's soil to landing on our closest cosmic neighbor, the Moon. Humanity's success is nothing short of achievements. Still, on the universal scale, we may be rather uncertain about what would happen if we met an advanced alien race with technology better developed than we could ever imagine. In 1964, a Soviet astronomer by the name of Nikolai Kardashev introduced the theoretical scale that can be used to calculate a potential civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy this civilization can produce. It's known as the Kardashev scale, this scale of three traditional types, but many extensions of modifications to the skills and proposed sense of its creation. The scale is logarithmic, meaning as we go on, the amount the power the civilization has is much, much more substantial. In 1964, Kardashev characterized the three base levels of civilization based on the energy available to them. Type 1, the smallest of the original types, is also called a planetary civilization. This is not similar to our good old friend Earth. Type 1 civilizations are capable of storing and using all of the energy that reaches this planet from its host star, which in our case is the Sun. This amount of energy would mount to an enormous 7 times 1017 watts. Notice how I said most similar though, as their modern civilization here on Earth does not quite exactly fit that Type 1 civilization classification Yes, I know we've unfortunate humans can't even fit into the lowest level of the advanced civilization. Rather than fitting into a type 1 civilization, we humans lined one of the extended types of civilizations, type 0. When this scale was proposed by famous astronomer physicist Carl Sagan, who produced a formula to define a certain hypothetical civilization, in this he mentioned that zero civilization will control approximately one megawatt or one million watts of power, which is minuscule compared to the amount of power we use on a daily basis. In 2015 alone, the total world energy consumption, 17.35 terawatts, or this huge number, our civilization will be approximately that type to 0.72. Even as a civilization with 7 billion humans on our planet, 12 of which adventure to the moon, with spacecraft that spent billions of miles into the abyss of interstellar space and plans to colonize Mars in the near future, we still only score a just 0.72 of the Kardashev scale. According to Carl Sagan, humankind is going through a phase of technical adolescence typical of a civilization about to integrate the Type 1 Kardashev scale. Michio Kaku, another brilliant theoretical physicist, suggests that humans may attain Type 1 status in the next 100 to 200 years, and Type 2 status perhaps next few thousand years, and Type 3 status in 100,000 to 1 million years. This really goes to show the truly immense time skills it would take to advance to the next type of civilization. However, we are heading towards becoming a type 1 civilization in the next couple hundred years or so. And this is a huge step for humanity. As a type 1 civilization, we would have total control over our own planet. Perhaps we could influence the weather, change the geological makeup of our own planet, and much, much more. 
However, even this amount of energy is tiny compared to the next type of civilization, Type 2. Type 2 civilizations, also referred to as stellar civilization, can control the total energy of their host star and transfer the energy throughout the entire solar system. One famous hypothesized device to use to harness the entire energy output of a Type II civilization host star is called the Dyson structure. You may have seen these before as they are rather famous in science fiction. The name was coined by Freeman Dyson, and it's a system of orbiting solar power satellites. Another rather exotic idea to harness energy for a Type II civilization would be to feed a stellar mass, for instance a star, into a nearby black hole and gather the photons emitted by the accretion disk. Nonetheless, a Type II civilization would not only build these huge structures, but would control and live within them. They would control every single planet in their solar system, mile the asteroids at their leisure and nearly do whatever they want inside the solar neighborhood. The amount of power the civilization would have is extraordinary. What is nothing one can compare to Type 3 civilization? Type 3 Civilization Type 3 civilization, also referred to as a galactic civilization, can control the total energy of its entire host galaxy. The amount of power the civilization would have is truly frightening. This civilization would function extremely similar to the way a Type 2 civilization work. It would harness the power of stars, mine planets, and asteroids, and so on. But not only for one star, but for billions of stars. A civilization such as this would use planets and solar systems like Legos, building and deconstructing planets to build up their kingdom elsewhere in the galaxy. The galaxy would seemingly become their playground, and everything they do and use is merely a toy. Harnessing the energy of quasars would be like hitting the lottery for them. The supermassive black hole, the center of their galaxy, could be used as an energy source for a Type 3 civilization. Galactic real estate would become a reality, with planet stars or even complete solar systems being auctioned off by some supreme leader. Interestingly enough, this hypothetical galaxy may not even be noticeable. If such a civilization did exist, all of the energy from these stars would be held and used for whatever the civilization may need. This means all the starlight gas and elements in an entire galaxy would become like your kitchen pantry. If all of the matter and their entire galaxy was exploded for energy, an outside viewer would view the galaxy to be completely invisible. It would appear as if there were a hole in the galaxy, or if they have colonized the entire galaxy, perhaps nothing at all. There is a place in space known as the Great Void. At nearly 330 million light years in diameter, the Great Void is one of the largest known voids in the whole universe. It is normally referred to as a super void. This region of space is apparently devoid of life in galaxies as we know it. Region of space with such a massive size as the Great Void contained, scientists calculated there should be at least 2,000 galaxies in space but today their volume of 60 galaxies has been discovered in the Great Void. This is a mere 3% of the amounts of galaxies that should settle an area this large. So, where are they? It, to be Type 3, civilizations fully dominating an entire region of space, milking a 330 million light year wide region for resources. Leave your opinion in the comments below, and I'll be sure to respond to them as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching.